got about 38 degrees to go. And do you guys ever have days where it's just stunning outside, but you've committed to yourself to get projects done? Ugh. <laughs> Fall doesn't give us a lot of great days, but we've had quite a few lately, and boy oh boy, it's really hard to stay focused. Really have that itch to go outside and enjoy this weather, because you know what? In probably two days, it'll be snowing and raining sideways, and then the project will be done. So I guess we'll have to just cozy up inside and enjoy some rest, huh? Yesterday we started turning that bin of firewood that we used to light the hot tub today into a butcher block slab for the kitchenette cabinets. We did a lot of work yesterday picking out the wood, bringing it in here. We got it all dimensioned and edged and then we got tired. If you're just joining us, we're working on our kitchenette cabinets. We've been working on this project for quite a while now. We built the boxes, the drawers, the hardware. The face frames, the doors, we worked on painting all that stuff and then we ran into a bottleneck with the finishes. We decided to outsource that, we're waiting for a quote. So we're shifting gears now and working on the butcher block slab. All of this wood was actually in our firewood pile. It's offcuts from the slabs when we cut our timber frame. Because we're building a butcher block, we have a lot of discretion on the length of the pieces of wood that we're going to be using. And because we have a lot of random wood links, this is perfect for butcher blocking. In case you're new to our channel, we've been working on our house for a couple of years now. We actually milled our very own timber frame from logs. And there was a tremendous amount of wood that came off there that was not for the beams and posts for the house. Some of that, a lot of it, ended up as a boneyard, two inch material, etc. And we've milled that into things like the loft decking, etc. But we also had a lot of wood that was just too time consuming to deal with because we had time constraints and it just got shoved into this massive pile of firewood. It felt terrible doing it, but we had to stay focused or we were gonna miss our deadline. It feels great to be taking this stuff back out of the firewood pile and finding a new use for it. So right now we're working on cutting all the big knots and things out of these pieces for two reasons. One, we don't really want them in the butcher block and two, they have a high propensity to damage planer blades. So why not just get rid of them now? The bad news is it creates a bunch of little pieces, but we overcut by almost 80 linear feet of material. So we shouldn't run out, um, but we are trying to be kind of conservative on these cuts, leaving some of the, the wood that's really close to the knots. So today, we've got to work on planing everything down to thickness a little over, get all the edging done so that the boards fit super tight together, and then we should be ready for glue up. That last one? Yeah. Okay. I think those will go through the planer. I think so. I guess we'll try them if we need them. How's that? Yep, that's my theory. Okay. So yesterday I mentioned that we were gonna try to cheat a little bit because we have around 120 linear feet of glue up to do. And if you've ever squeezed one of these wood glue bottles, you either have really robust forearms or your hand gets really tired pretty fast because it's pretty thick coming out. We thought, hey, why don't we cheat a little bit and try to find a product that'll work in our cordless caulking gun. If you haven't seen the video where we discovered this when we were working on some other projects with ridiculous linear footage of adhesive, check it out. If you don't have one of these things, you're not living. This, this thing's incredible. If you think your forearm gets tired squeezing a glue bottle, try squeezing a caulking gun for, I don't know, 400 feet, or maybe if you're doing subfloors or, or gluing up sheetrock or something like that. They are expensive, but trust me, they are a lifesaver. You will find yourself going through boxes of adhesive and thinking nothing of it. The silly battery will last 
days, days. It's a ridiculous amount of tubes that you can go through. So we went looking locally for what we could find to stick in there and do this job. And let's just say that our options seemed not that great. We found this product, which seems like it'll work, but unfortunately the labeling is kind of weak on the back side and it, it just doesn't seem maybe like it's perfect for this. It probably would work, but we're not really sure. We Googled the uh, spec sheet on it and the cure time is 48 hours. And quite frankly, we don't have 48 hours. So we're gonna stick with tried and true. We picked up a bunch of wood glue and I picked up small bottles. My experience is when these bottles start to get low and there's a bit of air in there, you start to get a skin on the glue and it starts to go bad. So this gallon looks awesome until you realize that when you get about half a bottle, you start having issues with it because you can't extract the air from the bottle. So I picked up these little bottles and I think we're gonna have to just tough it out and build up our forearm grip strength. To add another degree of complexity to this project, we have all this stuff that's kind of amounted to just scrap from the face frames, the doors, and wood that we had brought in for each of those projects, but we didn't end up using. And while I love the idea of sticking this all back out in the weather and just letting it all turn into that type of wood, I like the idea of burning it up and getting rid of it more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make this stuff into the end wall that's gonna separate the countertop from the washer and dryer. So we're gonna be doing another glue up on this. This is gonna be pretty tight because there's different, different lengths here. We need about eight feet by uh, two feet to build this end wall. But if we can make this work, it'll be gone. We'll have a beautiful end wall and we'll have less stuff in the garage and the boneyard. may have understated the difficulty of creating an end panel out of all this mess, but I think it's really not that difficult when your equipment's working properly. So without realizing it, and maybe I'm realizing I need to be more attentive to the shop smith, this fence moved out by maybe a degree, maybe, or two. And what happened was we had the fence moved too far to the right and you know what, it's been that way for a really long time and it never really dawned on me that we can move it over the table more and that it would have more support. We had it clear out here and this table support is not very rigid, or the fence support, so you can actually push on that end of the fence and move it. Where when it's out here and it's got a good firm bite on this, it actually works pretty good. So my mistake, and I'll be doggone, all of our boards started turning into trapezoids took no time at all. So thankfully we caught on and we had to do a lot of double work and triple checking everything. So I think what was a simple task got turned into a really complicated task because of just a misaligned fence. And yeah, we're talking about maybe two degrees, maybe one. So we've got all this stuff edged and it's basically close to ready for glue up. Um, the only thing we need to do is square off the corners on these little guys. And then I think we're ready to start setting this stuff up for gluing. The idea was we could glue this while we're working on all of that fun stuff. Here's hoping we can still do that. This is not good, but this is gonna be hidden. So we're gonna get away with a little bit of sin right there. Of course, this piece is kind of fugly anyway. That's tight, tight. 
tight. Yeah, this one looks good enough to glue up. Okay, so we could lose just a little bit and be still big enough to go through the planer. Well, once again, this end wall is absolutely monopolizing our day. We're trying to get this all glued up, and lo and behold, the problem that I mentioned earlier with the fence on the joiner has finally caught up to us where a couple of these boards, the edge is not square to the face. So we clamped it up, and now the panel's got a wonk in it. And unfortunately, this glue is super tacky. Once you set it, it wants to glue right now and you've got to get abusive to get it, try to get it corrected. It looks like the boards are all laying flat, but when you look on the bottom, they're not. And any variation top to bottom is gonna result in a thinner board as we go through the planer, too thin, in fact. The other lesson I just learned that kind of prohibits this from happening is gluing up similar thickness boards. Because we've got different thicknesses going on here, it's harder to identify that. Whereas, hopefully with the butcher block, everything's the same thickness, so if something's standing up or down, you know you can see it. So, today is not going as planned, and, and it's full of lessons, and we're just picking through them one at a time. Hopefully, we'll get these all worked out before we get to the butcher block. All right, so at least it's all glued up. I'm not sure if that's a good thing yet or not. We'll find out when we send it through the planer. So the next step, once this is all glued up and, and kind of set, we can run this through the planer, get the thicknesses straightened out because it's it's narrow enough it'll still go through the planer that all done we can then glue the two pieces together and then we'll have the end wall once that glue is set we can finish sanding it i'm not sure if all that's going to happen today but that's kind of the next steps we do want to get this completely glued up um, that way it's basically set to the side and it can cure overnight which should give us time to start working on all this craziness so we've got to get this stuff through the joiner on one side, so we've got something flat to plane against. Idaho, you dirty dog. It's these sunsets and these beautiful fall days with fall color. People come visit and they're like, I have to live here. But just so you know, winter is coming. This flipping sucks. I mean, this is what the end looks like. I don't know what we did. Totally screwed that up. Should have spent more time trying to get those boards level to each other, so. The good news is this whole side right here is gonna be buried in the bottom of the back of the cabinet, so whatever. But it's a good time to learn. Look how bad this one is. This is, this is also pretty bad. So many lessons on this project. So many lessons.
Are you guys going to the hot tub? Yeah. Oh, man. All right, well, enjoy it. I know it's hot. Maybe after I get done with all this planning, I'll take a dunk before bed. It's rare it's heated, and it's rare it's yep. not too hot. And it's rare it's not frigid outside. I mean, it's not hot, but it's like not 15 Cold degrees either. Lining. Yep. All right, well, enjoy your soak. We will. Okay. And the problems continue. So we've been struggling to feed these boards for some reason, and it's intermittent, and I don't know, super frustrating. So we've been diagnosing the feed and the covers, and <laughs> the list is endless. Um, we think we have it narrowed down to the fact that the boards are like a snivel too wide all of a sudden. Super weird. So. We're gonna just take a blade's width off of them in the table saw after fussing with this forever and see if suddenly the planer just works like a charm. almost fell asleep on that one, true story. I did not know if we were gonna get this done tonight. It seemed like all things were stacked against us when we first put the planer up, it wouldn't move up and down, and then all of a sudden we we're having feed issues. Trimming the boards definitely did it. I mean, they might have been just like that much too wide. Apparently it makes all the difference in the world. I'm also feeling a little ecstatic that these looked horrible when we first started, not gonna lie. They look like a train wreck. And now they're starting to look how I envisioned them. And if we glue that up nice and tight like that, we'll have ourselves a proper end panel. We've got just a little bit of roughness right here, but we've had to come down extra thickness to make this all work. We're down to five eighths instead of three quarter. So it's a little thinner end panel or end wall than I really wanted, but I'm not unhappy with it. Um, we could probably just sand out that last little bit of roughness and it's gonna get varnished anyway. I know, Milano is beautiful fir wood and then we're covering it in varnish. But I think we'll be really happy with it. It's gonna match the cabinets and look super sharp. So the whole reason for trying to get this done was so we could glue it up again so that it's done. I think we were planning on being done gluing up the entire butcher block by now. And nope, hasn't happened yet.
Let's see. Put all that through the planer on two sides, like six times, or go to the hot tub.